Happy Fourth of July, everybody. And to celebrate, I wrote you a poem. Roses are red, violets are blue. Everything's closed and there's nothing to do. The fireworks are canceled and we're all stuck at home, binging on Netflix and glued to our phones. So what can I do, I thought in my head? Cause that's where thoughts occur, whether wake or in bed. Oh, what can I do to cheer people up? What can I do? I'm stuck at home too. And then it occurred to me in a flash of insight, I'll go live on YouTube and I'll go live tonight at 7 p.m. on the East Coast, that is. 4 o'clock out west, 1 a.m. in Madrid. I'll answer your questions, tell some jokes, and play games. Even prizes I'll give, though they'll be kind of lame. So head over there now to YouTube, you know, and set your reminder for tonight's special show. Two, one, two. Check, check. Yes. All right. Hold on. Check, check. <laughs> of course, of course. I'm I'm recording stuff all week with no problem, and then the moment I go live, everything goes haywire. Can you hear me now? I think you can. I think you can. All right. So sound, yay, yay. Wait. Up, up. Applause. Sound. All right, so now that we are back, hi, happy 4th of July to all my friends here in the United States, and happy July 4th to everybody outside the United States. I was saying, do you like my uh, my brick background? We're playing around with a green screen. Check this out. Like that. I can make myself be anywhere. I don't have to be stuck at home on 4th of July. I can be, oh, I don't know, enjoying fireworks or anywhere that we wish to be so we'll get into that a little bit later basically i'm just doing that because i have been recording every single day recording lessons for my online voice training course and i'm using the camera over there the really good camera and everything set up with the tripod and lights and they're all off to the side so that i can not be a talking head for the course and use my whole space in my home production video production studio that I have created for that purpose. What is he talking about? Well, uh, if you don't know, I have been committing myself for a month now to creating the, I'm putting, I'm about to put something up for you, I'm typing it now. Uh, so I've been creating a voice training course and 
it, this next class that's going to come in in July next week, it'll be the last time that I run it at this cheap price because I thought it was going to be like 10 classes in and out in a couple of weeks. No, it's, it's a full month. I, I just had so much to say after 20 years in the business of making my living on a microphone and showing you how to do the same. If you, here, I'll put it up there again. If you have ever thought about becoming a voice actor, first you need to train your voice, okay? Before you can get booked, you have to learn how to use the instrument. If you are on a career path to become a manager or a leader or an executive, anything that requires that you communicate more than one-to-one, -one, one to many, then these communication skills are going to be invaluable for you as well. And if you're a content creator, if you're a podcaster, if you're a streamer, if you're just getting into putting your show online or just doing more online meetings in Zoom rooms all day or team meetings, you need to know how to show up and communicate using your voice in a situation like this because you can't own a room when we're all virtual. You can't just show up and wow people with your physical presence because we're not going to be physically present for a long time. That is why I've created this training. It's super cheap. I'm keeping it under $100 one more time. You must add your name to the wait list in order to get the email on Monday. If you're in, it'll, I'll, I'll get off this and do the fun stuff in a second, but I just want to let you know, if you want to be on the waiting list, go over there to joshuaseth.com training right now, put your email in, and then I will notify you ahead of everybody else so that you can get on this. I have to keep the groups small because I do a group Zoom coaching call at the end. All of this, 30 days of video trainings, exercises, video, audio, just I'm just putting up everything that I know in that group. And we're in group three for the first bunch of students right now. And it's going really well. So get on the list and then that's it. Okay. So enough moving on, moving on. Let's see how you guys are doing. And then I've got some news. I've got some Digimon news and some fun stuff to get to. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel to get notified when I go live next. I am attempting to do these every Friday. I took a little bit of a break there for Black Lives Matter because I felt me, you know, <laughs> What am I how what is what am I going to say? The best thing I can do is zip it and listen and give space for all of that to play out and and so that's what I did. I just went quiet here on YouTube for a few weeks uh, to let other voices be heard. But now at some point we have to uh, move on and uh, re-engage with our lives and I thought what better a time to do that than here on this celebratory weekend. So hi to everybody. Hi, Elizabeth. Mm. Look at that profile icon. I like that. Shout out to you, Elizabeth, for the, having the tie in your icon. Let's see. Oh, by love, 863. Everybody is welcome. Canadians, too. Even though you won't let us into your country, I understand why. And... <laughs> Support it, honestly, and, and uh, you are welcome in my virtual world right here. Oh, my friend David, using his full legal name right there. David Levison, Esquire, happy fourth to you as well. Let's see. Um, um, passing, passing through a bunch of sad stuff about a dog. Sorry to hear that, but we don't want to bum everybody else out. Happy fourth to you, Benjamin. And from Renee and from the Sarah K uh, coming in from who knows where. We'll get to where you guys are in a moment. And somebody's saying that they made a drawing that I cannot see. Oh, I can see it. It's it. Woo, that, that's a pretty good drawing there, Renee. I can't draw. I'm always amazed when people can. Speaking of drawings, check this out. My son made <laughs> my son made this drawing. I don't know if he's on here or not. I hope so. My son made this drawing of Ty, and it got almost a thousand likes. Here, wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna text my son right now, and if he's not on, make sure he gets on right now. Oh no, I don't have it. Mm, he'll have to watch it later if he's not on now. Wait, 
Tiger, get on my YouTube live. I'm showing your picture. Okay, there we go. All right, so he drew that, and that's me. Okay, uh, almost a thousand likes on Twitter. Hi, Sam. Hi, Susie. You are all seen. You are all acknowledged. And mm, da, 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 a freeze pop. I want a freeze pop. I hope you brought enough to share. Actually, I thought about bringing up snacks and popcorn and stuff like that. And it just ran out of time because I spent all afternoon writing and recording the Speaking with Confidence module that I will be releasing tomorrow to the people in my voice training group. Hello, Brooke. Thank you for loving my voice work. That is always nice to hear. Hello. Hello, Daddy-O. And can, can I sing Braveheart? I don't know what the lyrics are. Uh, post the lyrics and I'll make up a tune to go with that. Hello, hello, soy boy. And yes, it has, it has, Renee. It has been a long time. It works. John, I don't know what you're referring to, but I'm, I'm whatever it is down there, I'm, I'm glad it's working for you. That's, hey now, I need a, I need my little like, mm -hmm. chimes sound. Uh, nah, nah, nah. All right, skipping ahead, skipping ahead, because we've got some news to get to here. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like a Christmas poem. Yeah, probably. <laughs> the thing that I did at the beginning. I know how you're talking about. How am I? Well, thank you for asking, Elizabeth. Um, you know, it goes in waves. I Look, <clears throat> although I'm called a motivational speaker, I am not an optimist. I'm not a pessimist either. I think I am a realist. I think that the, the most... A motivating thing is to just acknowledge reality and accept that we can play a part in our own destiny. Nothing is written until we write it. One of my favorite movies of all time is the David Lean Academy Award winning movie, Lawrence of Arabia. Brain freeze. Uh, I, need, I need a warp laser sound for that. Brain freeze. Right? Uh, in Lawrence of Arabia, there's this scene this famous scene where lawrence is with this bedouin tribe in the arabian desert i've actually been there in jordan i went to see the the lost city of petra on a camel uh, some years ago it was just an amazing trip i was out there doing a show in egypt and i just hopped over to jordan specifically to see this because i love that movie so much so anywho imagine that L peter o'toole playing lawrence of arabia he is on a camel with all these arabian soldiers this army that he is putting together and they're they're going through the desert when this big sandstorm comes and they lose one of their own and in his in in his experience you don't leave a fallen comrade behind but in their philosophy it is written right it is it is god's will it is written this this soldier is lost to the sands of the desert and we should just move on because our destiny is not our own. It is written. Lawrence doesn't believe this. And he goes back into the sandstorm, wraps his face up, and he braves the elements. And he goes back and he finds this guy and he puts him on the back of his camel and he rides forward to meet the rest of his team. They're amazed when they see him. He's literally saved this man's life. And upon seeing them again, he declares, nothing is written until we write it. That to me is motivating. And in answer to your original query, that is how I am. Yeah, there's a lot that sucks right now. A, a, a pandemic has swept through the world, personally destroyed my career, my whole industry, all my friends are out of work. I have friends that are taking COVID tests right now. I have a family member that has tested positive for it. I'm sure some of you know people that have suffered either uh, economically or socially or mentally through the isolation or health-wise, you know, if you people that you've ha ha known have had it or have it now. I can't call that good, right? It would be uh, just uh, denying reality. For me to say, oh yeah, everything's great. This is a blessing in disguise. Screw that. It sucks. You know, I wish COVID didn't happen. However, it is reality. And upon realizing that, we can simply decide that the seed of every 
challenge is an opportunity waiting for us to discover it, water it, and pay attention to it to allow it to grow. That's what I am attempting to do through innovating a new career as a voice and speech coach and a trainer with my Train Your Voice course that I'm putting together here. I figure, all right, I am quote unquote stuck at home. How can I look at that as a gift? I'm using it as an opportunity to educate my children and spend more time with them. Oftentimes I'm traveling the world doing shows and speeches and I'm not with them as much as I'd like, but now I have this opportunity. What in your life can you look at as a gift were in it would otherwise be a challenge? Actually, put that in the comments below. I'd like to see that. How can you look at something that you're experiencing right now as an opportunity? Sure, it's a challenge. Sure, it sucks. But is there a seed of an opportunity in it? Is there actually some way of looking at this experience as a gift? Or is it allowing you to spend more time with your family? Is it allowing you to learn to say, cook or draw or write that book that you always had in your head or reinvent your career or learn a new skill? If there's anything like that, put it in. And if there's not, that's fine too. You know, sometimes it's okay to just like hang out on YouTube and spend a little time like we're doing right now just reconnecting with one another. But if there is some way that you have found to turn this challenge into an opportunity for reinvention or personal growth, I'd like to hear about it and I'd like to post that as something motivating for everybody else. So put that in the comments right now if you can. In the meantime... Uh, hey, let's do a little commercial. Cameo, while well, I'm waiting for those to come in. Cameo, I'm gonna put that up in a second. No, 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 no. Boy, it would be nice to have a moderator here. If my moderator is here, Misha, raise your hand, say hi, so I can find some way to get you involved here. Uh, okay, boom, there we go, Cameo. I, I got four Cameos came in, four today. That's personal record, four. I, everything's backwards, it's so weird. Four. Four, four, four. I look like I don't know how to use my hands, but my right hand goes up and it comes on the left hand of the screen. Got four cameos today. I'm really loving doing these cameos. I, I'm i keeping them cheap. They want them when they first brought me on to cameo. They're, for those that don't know, they're video shout outs that celebrities do and they thought I was a celebrity. So they asked me to come on. They made a price suggestion and I'm like, nah, just keep it at 20 bucks. I'd rather do a lot of them, especially while I'm, here at home. So after this, I'm going to go downstairs and hook up my little ring light and snap the camera in and give cameo shout outs to people. So if you want to support this live stream, or if you just have somebody you want to wish a happy birthday or happy 4th of July to a happy graduation or whatever, just go to cameo.com, look for me, and uh, I'd be happy to do that for you. I'll make sure that it gets done during this holiday weekend as well. Also, from the beginning of this live stream, I've asked people, please, if you're going to break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend or get a divorce or quit your job, pay me 20 bucks and I will do it for you on Cameo. I would love to. Nobody's taking me up on that. I'll make it funny. <laughs> I promise. All right. Let's see. Let's get back to your comments. <laughs> Are you hearing these sound effects? By the way, here, I'm going to do crickets right now. Did you hear those crickets? I don't know if you heard them. What? People are saying they can't hear. You can't hear? What the? Hey. Oh, that was from before. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going back in the comments. Okay. All right. So here we are. I went, I went too far back looking for your comments. Now, mm, I'm assuming you can hear now. Uh, 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 look, yeah. Insane with audio. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, that was before we got the mic back. Mm, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> you put on a little bit of, a little bit of music here, or a little radio station ID sound. And I'm going to go forward and find what you have written since. And then we will get to the news. Yeah, thank you for that, Sarah Gay. <laughs> Always entertaining. I hope so. I hope so. Give you a bit of levity and mirth. Oh, yeah, I got to do your voices in, in funny accent. 
Uh, reading you loud and clear, my friend, says Noah. Happy Independence Day, Mr. Seth. I haven't fireworks here at home. Well, when the missus gets in a bit later. Wah, wah. Still need a pack of howling wolves background. Oh, that's just for you. Uh, evidently, uh, a fan of Wolf's Reign, in which I played Hige. Okay, so. Oh, wait a second. A puppy. I love puppies. I put up the wrong one. You don't know what I'm talking about. There it is. A puppy. Gershk. That's lovely. I used to have a little a little pug when I lived in Los Angeles. And uh, no more. He got old. And he's shuffled off the mortal coil. Pushing up daisies now. He's a dead parrot. So <laughs> I like the South Park reference there. So I put that up. But as their children present, we're moving on. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. Can I put a Digimon photo up here? I do have some Digimon news. If you want to see it in theaters, I have a way to do it. Digimon, maybe, you know what? With all this, Digimon are the champions. So, okay, so maybe, maybe, didn't know I could sing. You know, I, I'll, I'll, all right, before I get to the Digimon news, I did like my story in the voice training course and I talk about how when I was eight years old, I grew up in a small town in Ohio and there really wasn't a lot around other than cows and cornfields and we had five horses. It was, it was very rural. I wasn't rural, but the area was. But we did have a couple of things. We had a, a big college, Kent State University, and we had a professional equity musical dinner theater started out as 500 seats and went to 2,500 seats, the biggest in the country. And it did, it brought in like touring Broadway casts, except for the kids. The kids wouldn't travel with the casts. But the first time that I went down there, it was because they were casting Brigadoon and they needed a red, redheaded kids. And my little brother, Jeremiah, was was redheaded till he, till he lost his hair, but he, he was a redhead and he didn't want to do it. But I saw it and I, my, the story my mom always told was that my eyes lit up and she knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life is perform. And I marched myself right up to the director and the producer and the table, you know, with the decision makers and said, guys, I'll do anything to be involved. I'll, I'll dye my hair red and you could put freckles on me with mascara or whatever. And they said, no. However, then they started casting me in all the shows after that because I was so gung-ho. And I did eight shows a week, eight-week runs with touring Broadway casts on the same professional level as those adults from the time I was eight to 18. And I sang in all those shows, sang, and I guess you could say I danced. I moved. I moved around to the music. But the singing was real. I was a lyric tenor, and that's how I first learned to train my voice was doing all the songs in those musicals at a professional level. I was in four productions of Oliver. I was the artful dodger to Rip Torn's Fagin at, it was at Kenley Players and in uh, Akron, Ohio at that point. And like I said, it, it's the, singing is really the best training for voice acting and any kind of public speaking because singing is just speaking where you're holding the note we are holding it longer. However, to be able to get into that uh, vocal state, your, your voice is a muscle to be able to train it to that point, whether or not you're speaking. That's why I'm doing this voice training. You don't have to sing to be able to speak, but it helps. So, anywho, thank you for that, Brooke. Uh, -da -da mm -mm -mm. All right, moving on, moving on. Oh, ah. Okay, let's get on to the news. This can't, uh, Desden says, I can't wait to see the dub of Kazuna. So here we go. News. Let's see if we got some news. Some news sound. There we go. Hopefully you can hear news sound. News of Digimon. Here we go. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm playing this back here just to see if I can hear this news music. Can I? Yes, yes. You can hear the news music. Okay, I can turn that back down. One man show here. All right. So news. Would you like to see Digimon in the theaters? 
say yes or clapping hands or some emoji or whatever in the in in the comments if you would like to see Digimon in the theaters. Well, I have a way for you to do it. Dropping it in now. Boom! All you have to do is go to Malaysia. Yeah. Digimon. In Rojack Daily, it came up on my in, in my Google Alerts, in my email for my name. It's like, oh, your name came up in a newspaper in Malaysia. Why? Because Malaysian cinemas to reopen in July. Here are some of the movies you can catch soon. And guess what? M movie number three. Boom! Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kazuna. So for all you guys that call yourselves super fans, they're like, well, why? why can't we see it in the movie theater just because it's COVID and we're going to infect people and they're going to die? Did they really have to not? Sh yes. You're not going to see it in the movie theater here. But if you're really a fan, well, then you will just <laughs> go to Malaysia. Womp, 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 womp. So that's part of the news. Yeah. Also, in Digimon news, do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, we've, we've announced some more cast members. So let's check it out. Which cast members? I pulled this right off of the Wikipedia for Digimon Kazuna. Those that don't know, yes, I have already been announced as the starring in Digimon Kazuna as the voice of Tai. And I went out to Los Angeles and I actually finished this recording the day that they shut LA down and I was concerned that I wasn't going to be able to get back to Florida where I live. Look at all that pixelation. I'm, I'm going to take this backdrop off. I don't think it looks very good. Boom. Much better. Okay. So, yes, I've been announced as Ty. Who else do we have? Ah, the lovely, lovely man, Paul St. Peter. Very warm man. And speaking of a very warm man, he is actually playing Warman. Interestingly, Laura Summer. Laura Summer is back as the voice of Patoman. And who else do we have? Some people I don't know. And Kirk Thornton. These are just good people all around. Kirk Thornton playing Gabumon and Garuruman and Metal Garuruman and so forth. The Kirk Thornton, if you didn't know. Uh, Noah, you can't afford the ticket to go to Malaysia? Really? Well, I guess you'll just have to get it on Blu-ray. All right. Who else do we have here? Let me narrow this down. Or I, I guess I could just move the mic over. All right. You just do it. But then I'm not looking. And then I'm looking. No, that, that won't work either. Okay. Let's get through this. Agamon. Tom Fawn. Funny man, Tom Fawn. Hey, if anybody is in contact with Tom Fawn, tell him to reach out to me. And I'll get him on this in an upcoming episode of The Joshua Seth Show. So I, I got to do this. On an upcoming episode of The Joshua Seth Show, I will be happy to interview Tom Fon because he is a funny dude. And not just looking. Who else do we have? Wah, 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 wah. Uh, Mona. Oh, my goodness. That's another one that I would love to interview is Mona Marshall. I've known Mona Marshall for 20 years. I think she was on the first or one of the first cartoons uh, animated series that I ever did actually and she's on South Park so we can always talk to her about that as well also Jeff Nimoy back as Tentoman uh, Mona's as Izzy of course as she always is and Jeff Nimoy was the original Tentoman uh, no I was the original Tentoman Tentoman and then they recast it with Jeff because I had my hands full doing Thai and uh, Jeff Nimoy, of course, the star and director and writer of Famish. I had him on a month ago and interviewed him on this show right as that was getting released. And if you're looking for a movie to watch this weekend, please support my friends. Jeff Nimoy is in it, as well as Lex Lang, another mensch, another really good guy, uh, as uh, <laughs> making, a, making his star turn in Famish as well, which you can, you can just rent that online. Oh, Colleen O'Shaughnessy as Sora. So the gang's all here. Wow. It's a dream come true for the fans. And of course, the very bald Derek Stephen Prince playing all those characters that you see down there. Okay. Moving on. Moving right along. Do, 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 do. Back to your comments. 
comment time. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, little news update. Is that all the news? Oh, oh, there's one more piece of news. Digimon Kazuna, I guess the release date has been, it has been changed once again. It looks, I, I have been told, pushed back to October 6th. You guys can verify that or not. So let's do the little uh, Johnny Carson thing and whoosh, okay, but he would do that with a pencil. And then I need a glass break sound. <laughs> I'll get that. I'll get it together uh, eventually on this show. Back to your comments. Okay, Desden, happy. Can't wait to see the dub of Kazuna. Me too. You know, I, I've only seen the bits and pieces that I voiced. I haven't seen the, the whole thing. I refuse to watch the, the subs because I don't want to get it in my head the way it was done previously. I want to come at it fresh as an actor. So I have never, ever seen any of the subs, only the dubs. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, doo -doo. Bro, I, I just it's so con it's confusing I gotta have to go back through all of these comments um, thank you Brooke and David is really happy for some reason I don't know why but he's just very happy I guess the weekend has started over at his household happy to see that Amanda Ray haven't been able to join alive in a while but happy to be here today Th thank you Amanda Ray and that all Rhymes. I don't know what Allie means. We had our holiday on the first. What holiday? What holiday is on the first? Is it your birthday? Happy fourth to the USA. Allie, please tell us in the comments what country you are from and what country celebrates on the first. In fact, everybody right now, type in where you are, the the city, state, country, whatever you want. Where are you now? Where are you isolating at home or sitting out the extended quarantine? I am uh, in a little beach community here in Florida, and it is blazing hot most of the year. It is lovely, and I can go paddleboarding or kayaking or hanging out at the beach with my kids, but it's basically one notch lower than surface of the sun here lately, so I'm just happy for air conditioning, basically. Uh, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit, a little bit. Uh, okay, I don't want to call out that there's a lot of comments here about something that was said. I'll weigh in. All right, look, when pe and I'm not going to post it because I don't want people jumping on this person. Um, so somebody said when I said the Black Lives Matter thing, somebody said all lives matter. Um, yeah, they do. But look, there's all kinds of of ways uh, to 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 make parallels. Yeah, of course, but that's not the point, right? So the, the meme that you always see is, okay, if someone's house is on fire and they come out and they say, my house is on fire, you don't go, uh, all houses matter. No, the one that matters the most right now is the one that's in jeopardy, okay? That's, that's why we're saying that. So I'm not going to belabor the point, but just realize that when, when you say, like all lives matter, that's not the point. Of course, nobody's saying my life matters, your life doesn't. What What is happening here is that people are realizing that there are minorities that have been treated unfairly for a very long time. They are being racially profiled. They are being um, abused by the justice system and the police, and it needs to stop. And everybody needs to be equal under the law, and everybody needs to be treated the same. At that point, once everybody is treated the same, sure, then we can go back to saying all lives matter. But for right now, let's just stand in solidarity and say black lives matter because they need to hear it, and they need to know that they're is that support that's what it means and and for that you know as long as i'm on this rant i guess let's just bring into this this whole blue lives matter thing uh they could take their badge off that's a choice that they made they take their badge off go home be back to be you know ethnicity skin color this sort of thing is something that we we're born with it is not a choice it's not you, you can't you can't just lump all these things in together as though they were the same thing they are not, okay? So for this moment in time, when it counts, we say Black Lives Matter as a way of standing in solidarity with people that need to know that they are not alone. Make sense? Okay. 
moving on. I'm only addressing that because I'm seeing it over and over in the comment thread here and felt I needed to weigh in. It's not to make anyone, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to demonize anybody or say you're a bad person or anything, but I just feel like maybe people perhaps don't quite understand where it's coming from. So hopefully now you do, and perhaps I have made a difference in some small way. All right, moving on. Drawings. Yes, Renee. <laughs> it's a hard turn. Let's do an air horn. Okay, <clears throat> back to the drawings. Yeah, drawing. I, like anything that you can do to be creative in this time. We have all this, most of us, unless you're an essential worker, at which point if I had a hat, it'd be off to you. But for most of us, we have a lot of extra time. If you can use it to develop a skill or pursue a creative endeavor, so much the better. This is a new skill for me, live streaming. I never thought I would do this. And I've got all this equipment here and software that I'm learning. And I'm actually in a class right now online just like the class that I'm, uh, that where I'm teaching voice skills and communication skills to people, I'm taking a class to learn to use this software so that month, week after week, when I come and do the show for you guys, hopefully it will be better. Uh, and that actually is uh, something I'm very interested in learning because once you learn a new skill, you never know how you can use it to innovate and expand your influence on the world. Boom. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Happy Fourth from Europe. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you. You guys as well. I noticed that Europe has opened up, but not to Americans. We got to get our act together, man. We got to look out for each other. All right. You know what? As long as this has become some whole social commentary thing, wear a damn mask, people. Please. Okay. Stop being selfish. All right. Here's all the things that you're going to say. Um, what if masks don't work? then it's a small inconvenience. What if they do work? Okay. Well, it doesn't stop me from uh, getting the coronavirus. It's not all about you. We live in a society. Wear it for other people. What about other people that are, you know, immunocompromised, have diabetes, have MS, are very old, live with people who are very old. People do live multi-generationally, you know, live with little babies and people that, you know, just do your part in some small way. You're not being asked to go to war for God's sake. You're being asked to just wear a mask and socially distance and wash your freaking hands. My whole life, I've wa watched guys come out of bathrooms in restaurants and not wash their hands. Or they just go, maybe they go, like that. Under the Women, you would be disgusted, okay? This is what guys used to do. Maybe this behavior will change. When I used to do, I was a headliner on cruise ships for years and they'd fly me out to some exotic destination somewhere in the world and it was awesome and I'd get on the ship and I'd spend the whole week with my like I'd go like this with my shirt and I put my hand under the shirt to open doors I never touch these doors because I go in a bathroom and see guys come out of walk out just walk right out the door in the bathroom and then there's thousands of people touching these door handles all anyway people would call me germ phobic for years because I did things like that, right? Aha! Who's laughing now? Now everybody is like this. I prefer to call it germ aware. Anywho, back to the masks, okay? You shouldn't be forced to be a decent human being to the rest of society. Nobody's taking your freedoms away. They're taking my freedom away! You don't have a freedom to hurt other people. You could be asymptomatic for weeks and not know it and spread and spread it, okay? There's a lot we don't know yet about this disease, but we do know that communicable diseases in general the start to be uh, communicable prior to you yourself feeling sick. So you must assume that you have it even though you don't when you go out into society. That is why we wear the mask, okay? If we all would just actually do what the recommendations from the scientists are, if we all would just wear a mask and socially distance and take these basic sanitary precautions for a month or six weeks, this whole thing would be knocked out. But we don't do that. So it's just going to go on and on and on. It's like yo-yo dieting, right? We do a little bit, lose a little bit of weight, celebrate, eat a cookie, put it back on. That's, what pe that's how people are dealing with this coronavirus. It's like, okay, I guess I have to. People are looking at me funny. I'll wear a mask. I'll socially distance a little bit. Oh, they're opening up the bars and restaurants. Woohoo! Throw caution to the wind. And then it all starts all over again. And, and we did the whole shutdown for nothing. So that's what it's like to live in America, especially Florida, right now. So wear a mask. All right. Boy, this is 
this is a little more serious than usual, but I've been sitting at home for months and I want to get back on an airplane and go somewhere and do something again someday. All right. So yes, I'm bringing it back to me. And also I don't want my friends and relatives and your friends and relatives and you to get sick. So let's do our part. Okay, back to your comments. Is it, is the latest Digimon movie coming out in two weeks? I don't think so. It was supposed to. Wait a second. Wait a second. I think it's been delayed. You guys can tell me. I think it's been delayed till October. Me and my girlfriend made a cameo that, wait a second. I made a cameo for you and your girlfriend and you just broke up and you didn't do it. Well, you could you could do one where we're like we're never getting back together. <laughs> I'm over you. I could make I could make you a cameo like that if the breakup's already. Or if you want her back, it's like, baby, please. I have seen the error of my ways. I'm changed. I'll do it different next time. <gasps> What's it gonna take? I could do one of those. I could either do I could do a cameo where you're like, yeah, yeah you know what? We broke up and I'm happy. <laughs> I, I feel like a weight has been lifted as this albatross is no longer around my neck. Or it could be like, baby, please take me back, please. It could be one of those too. Missed opportunity there. We could still do it. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment to my children's drawings. Yeah, my daughter did this amazing drawing of a cat too. But the, the Digimon drawing got more. I wonder why. Got more likes. Um, which tradition American Pie... <laughs> What? Okay, fine. On to the silly stuff. Um, what? What's that? So, somebody's asking me which, which tradition would I prefer? Oh, would Tetsuo prefer pumpkin pie or apple pie? Tetsuo from Akira. Uh, which I guess I can put up the Tetsuo for people that don't know. Boom, that's Tetsuo. So, which tradition would Tetsuo prefer? American uh, uh, apple pie or pumpkin pie? I would say whichever one would explode more. He would do whichever one would explode because uh, he's kind of violent that way. So, probably, probably pumpkin pie. I think that's more smashable. Weird. All right. <laughs> I, I like how you write spaghetti, Noah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> My daughter's favorite favorite dish is spaghetti. I think it's called spaghetti carbonara. Uh, at least that's what I call it when I make it for her. And we're, you like the magical chimes, do you? All right, I'll do the magical chimes for you one more time. Magical chimes for Marguerite. Moving right along. Tried sending me the lyrics twice, but it's not showing up. Hmm. All right. Maybe send it to me ahead of the next stream, and I'll put something together. And maybe not. Uh, joining in. Oh, uh, Kawaii, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Kawaii, the otaku, has been joining in from a hotel. What? You're not really sitting out the quarantine in a hotel the whole time, are you? I read this story about this honeymooning couple that went to a hotel like in the Maldives, some island vacation destination in this resort. The resort shut down. Everybody went home, but they couldn't get off the island for some reason. Like there were no flights back to their home country and it was really expensive to stay there. And the whole hotel continued to operate just for them. I wonder whatever happened to them. I read that story over a month ago. Has anybody else read that? Do you have any updates? Hmm. All right. Continuing on. Um, the vaccines. Yeah, but you know, don't count on it. Okay. Because it goes through iterations, right? Experimentations and, and trials and then bigger trials. And then even it, when it does come out, the vaccine has to be created in enough quantity and then disseminated at enough distance to enough people, enough people have to want to take it. And then we, ha and then if it develops antibodies, you still don't know if those antibodies are going to last. I mean, people get flu vaccines every year. They don't last, right? I wouldn't pin your hopes on a vaccine is all I'm saying. It's not just around the corner, okay? Again, I'm a realist. I'm just trying to tell it to you like I see it, okay? For better or worse. At least I'm telling it to you like I see it. 
Okay. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Um, so the course, oh, the course I was thinking of taking is going to be 100% online in the fall. So I won't have to move to do it. Oh, that's great. But I don't know what kind of course you're thinking of taking. So it's all a mystery to me. But if that's good for you, I'm glad to hear it. All right, I got some other stuff to get to. Let me just get through these comments real quick. This, okay, good, good. Amanda Ray, this, mm, uh, this whole thing has given me time I haven't had in years to spend more time reconnecting with my hobbies that I used to love. I've been able to explore my creativity more. See, okay, good, good for you, good for you. Appl That's what I like to hear, okay? Not just binge watching Netflix or crying in your bowl of cereal, but you know, finding something positive out of it because it's up to us. Success starts with attitude. Actually, it starts with an S, so it starts with um, something else. <laughs> uh, uh, achievement <laughs> starts with your attitude. How about that? Ah, Byla wants to write fan fiction. Great. All right, here for the By Love 863 for your fan fiction. Here's what I suggest having written three, count them three books myself. A writer writes first thing in the morning, do your morning routine. And then before you go off to do whatever your responsibilities are for the day, sit down and write. And you could set a timer. If, you know, if it's five minutes, if it's 10 minutes, doesn't matter, but just get in the habit of doing it. And your fan fiction writing will improve over time and you'll get more done as a result of scheduling it in like that. Because when you don't schedule something like that in, it gets it gets just left for later, last, and never happens, or it happens intermittently. It's very hard to move forward that time. So for whatever your creative endeavor it is, schedule it in, especially if you can schedule it in first thing in the day before the things that you are required to do, it will help you immensely. And the other topic, the other suggestion rather that I'll give you on this topic is before you write, like the day beforehand, or maybe before you do any of it, take a stack of index cards and write down all your ideas, one idea, one concept, one thing on each card, and then you'll never have writer's block because you could just reach over, grab a card, and do automatic writing. Just pick up a card, look at the idea that you've written down ahead of time, and then just go for your allotted period of time. All right, that is my suggestion to you for writing your fan fiction. So good for you for wanting to do that. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, somebody else writing a TV script. Love it, love it. Yeah, look. Do Yes, do that writing, but do it consistently. Consistency with many things in life, consistency is key. That's that old Woody Allen quote about 90% of, or whatever the percent is, 90% of success just being showing up. So as a writer, showing up means just actually doing it. That's why I'm showing up now. Look, I haven't taken the course on how to learn to use this software yet. I'm starting that on Monday, but I'm doing it anyway because... Tony Robbins talks about fail forward fast. That's the idea. Fail forward fast. Don't be so concerned about making mistakes. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Just start doing it. Yeah, I was Shobu in Duel Masters, Brooke. I was the main character on that as well. In fact, the first time I went out to Australia, it was to do press for Duel Masters when it was going to be on the air over there. And I, in that trip, I had... Uh, book myself a few days ahead of time so I could go out on a liveaboard dive boat and I went scuba diving on Lizard Island uh, in the Great Barrier Reef and it was amazing. Thanks for bringing back that memory. Um, okay. Uh, so we have... <laughs> and that's when I was having audio issues. <laughs> All right, let me move forward very quickly. Give me a sec here. Okay, more good stuff. Good stuff. Good news. Good news. All right, well, taking the opportunity to watch movies, watch anime, draw, talk with family. Yes, communicate, reach out to people, right? My family has been doing these sort of family story times uh, that my uh, dad's wife, Margaret has been doing, and I'm very grateful for her doing that. It's actually bringing all the kids and the cousins and everybody closer together. So this is an opportunity to do that as well. Look at you, Rebel Wolf. Qu quarantine made me boot up a Duolingo app. I've got Duolingo on my phone, and I've been using it along with my kids to brush up on my Spanish skills. So 
Muy bueno to you. I just like to uh, sprek and say Espanol, you know, because it is Sebon. How am I doing? <laughs> With that. Uh, if I had a chance, would I write or direct Digimon? Uh, no, no. Um, I, uh, they, we, they have great people already, and i am already kind of got my hands full between the kids and then becoming a voice and speech coach with my new Train Your Voice program. Um, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> You're marvelous. Just wanted to say that, like Billy Crystal and the old SNL. Rip Torn was the voice of Zeus in Hercules. Yeah. Okay, call back to what I was saying about being in the, the cast of Oliver with Rip Torn. Okay, here's a quick Rip Torn story. As we wind down, I'll be done. Uh, I'm going to hard stop in eight minutes here, people, and keep these to under an hour. I don't know why people do these things for hours and hours on end. You got a life to get back to. So do I. So keeping it tight under an hour. So yeah, so Rip, my quick Rip Torn story. He's dead now, but he was very much alive back then. And he used to frighten me backstage right before we'd go on because as Artful Dodger, I had scenes with him. He was playing uh, he was playing Fagin. What was my line? I know a certain respectable old gentleman who'll give you lodgings for nothing and never ask for the change. And his name's Fagin. So I would do these scenes with him. And backstage, we'd be behind the curtain. Somebody would be getting ready to page the curtain, which is like pull it open so he and I could come out together. And he'd come to turn to me like to make sure that I'm ready because I was just a little kid. And he'd, he'd say, are you ready? I'd go, huh, Mr. Torn? And he'd go like this, good. And he'd, and he'd take it. He had fake teeth in the front, like a bridge. And he'd take all his teeth out and scare me half to death. And we'd go on like that. So he was very good at frightening the little kid children uh here's another one lunar lunar kuto says is that your given name lunar says quarantine had given me the chance to draw and write fantastic embracing the opportunity to practice more yeah absolutely good for you applause yay more positivity yes from amanda ray yes from the soy boy yes from the salmon i don't know what you're talking about and what you're <laughs> responding to but everybody's saying yes to something. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Thanks for all the positive support. Whenever it is, I'll have to look back on the playback later to see when those came in. So <laughs> you're going to go to Malaysia, right? Okay. <laughs> I would like to see that. <laughs> oh, it's about the Malaysia thing. <laughs> okay. Um yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We're back to that. Yeah. Well, I don't. Don't worry. No, I'm not going to Malaysia either. Good. Thanks. Okay. M let me move forward here real quick. I'm just gonna scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, Mona Yay coming back as the voice of Izzy. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, Michael Reese not coming back as Matt. At the last I heard, and this was years ago, he had become a lawyer. So. I think his billable hours as an attorney are probably far in excess of what he would get for voicing anime. Just, just guessing. He's moved on career-wise. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Okay, so we have some info, and I, I trust what Noah has to say on this. Uh, he had the Blu-ray combo pre-ordered on Shout Factory, but they refunded it because they could not keep the release date. Yeah, that's my. It'll come. Don't. It will come out. Uh, look, I just did pickups. You're not supposed to know this, but what the heck. Um, I did pickups from this mic in this room for Digimon Kazuna just like a couple of weeks ago. So they are still working on it. It's still it's still moving forward. So not to worry. It will it will come. That's the same day that Digimon the movie was released. Oh, October 6th. I think you're right. That'd be awesome. If it comes out and it would come out on Taikamaya 101's birthday. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I did not know that Derek Stephen Prince was on Twitch, and I don't even really know what Twitch is. I'm going to have to look into that. Apparently, it's a thing. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. So, I will, uh, I'll figure that. Oh, oh, Allie finally answered from the beginning. So, oh, that's right. Canada Day was July 1st. And yes, I have Canadian friends, and I should have put that together. So that's where she's from. Ty from the UK. Soy boy uh, dialing in from Wisconsin. How's the cheese? Wales. I've been to Wales. Ireland. I've been there too. I went to Cork, Ireland and it rained the whole time and I saw a castle and it was moss covered and it was very picturesque and beautiful. 
let's see and we let's see ireland and mm, you would love for me to join twitch what why 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 should why should i join twitch i'm on twitter you should follow me on twitter guys i, I all the funny stuff is happening over on twitter for some reason i i would like to break 10,000 followers on twitter too it's uh, twitter.com slash joshua seth i'm on facebook i have a facebook fan page and a personal page and i have uh linkedin that i never go to and then i've got this youtube now i have to go on to twitch Please, you got to give me some good reason, at least. New York City, Los Angeles, both places of which I have lived. Miami, right down the road from me. Florida, where in Florida? I am in St. Petersburg, in the Tampa Bay. Another Wisconsin, you two should get together. And New Zealand, I love New Zealand. If I never need to make a quick escape from this country, I would go there. Except you guys have been number one in uh, getting rid of the corona. And so you have closed your borders to the rest of the world. And I don't blame you. But I really love it. I especially love Wellington. I've been to Wellington a few times. And I got to tour Peter Jackson's, uh, um, it's not DreamWorks, what does he call it over there? It's where, where they made the Lord of the Rings. I got like a private tour. It was amazing. I've talked about that before. Another one in Wisconsin. Weird. Um, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Dutch country. The UK. Canada. What? Hudson. My dad used to... J, J, Jaceline? Jacqueline? Whatever. Uh, oh, well, I see. It. Yes. Okay. So you know, you know my family. That's why. What? Somebody from Malaysia? Tell us how the... How, it is to see the movie in the theaters. Take a picture and PM it to me. Uh, Hafiz, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which I'm probably not. Hafiz, if you go to see, if you really are from Malaysia and you go to see Digimon in the theaters, take yourself, take a picture of yourself like with the poster of Digimon and I will bring it into the next YouTube live. I promise you that. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's boiling wherever Amanda is. and It is boiling here too. John from Florida. Uh, a Phoenix, Florida. Another, I have a lot of people watching from Wisconsin. Who knew? Hmm. I wonder what that's all about. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. And I didn't even need to look at that. Noah. And Noah, happy birthday to your sister on her eighth birthday. Hooray! Okay. Moving toward the end. We will be out in like two minutes. Um... Hmm. Yeah, indeed. The truth will set you free. Oh, this is probably about my my rant <laughs> earlier on. And oh, somebody is getting the cookies. I used to love those cookies. And then they remove the nuts. I get why. Okay, people have allergies. Uh, I used to go out with a lady whose kids had bad allergies. So for them, sure. But for me, I like the the cookies with the nuts at the Double Tree. They're all warm and everything. Mm, I miss I miss it. You know, I love going to airplanes and hotels and, and being on the road and mic checks and backstage and the event setups for the shows and the speeches and everything. In the meantime, though, it's really nice to get together with you guys. Oh, and one last question, last couple questions here. Is Tiger going to be drawing other Digimon characters after his success with a tie pick? Yes, actually. Ninja Fox 1989. Tiger, as we speak this weekend, is drawing a character. He drew a Meliodas from Seven Deadly Sins, and he's drawing another character, and I will be releasing those next week on face, uh, Facebook and Twitter, so please follow me there. Oh, also, I'm on Instagram as well. Just look me up there so okay i have got to i've got to get out and man let me just see if there's anything really pressing i'm sorry if i didn't get to your comments but this would just go on forever so thank you for the happy fourth of july's and i'm i'm just gonna tell all you guys stay safe have a happy fourth of july weekend for those of us here in the usna and uh, try not to blow uh, your fingers off or anything because all of the public fireworks are canceled. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be doing them in your backyard. Please be careful and I'll see you next week.